Welcome to Facial Plastics Friday, Dr. Brace here, and I'm gonna continue on our series of complex rhinoplasty. What makes a nose more difficult to operate on than a standard primary or first time rhinoplasty? We talked about revision, we talked about septal perforation, and today I wanna to talk about the difficult nose of someone with a very small nose or a really low bridge that wants to make it bigger. Now, usually this is an Asian rhinoplasty, sometimes it's called ethnic rhinoplasty, somebody with darker skin with a lower bridge, a wider nose that wants to have more structure, more shape. To their nose. If you look at our picture here, it's the side view of the nose. Underneath the skin here is your septal cartilage and the bone that makes up your septum. And in order to make a nose look more defined and come up, we have to create something that will take up space there and create more of a structure. And so what that usually means is that we have to take rib. Now there are options that are outside of rib where you can put a prosthetic implant in the nose. I don't do those, but you can put Gore-Tex grafts in and you can put silastic implants in the nose. There's a risk of infection. There's a risk of extrusion. It's not your body, so your body can reject it. But with rib graft rhinoplasties, what we do is we harvest a rib from just underneath the right pec usually, or right in the breast fold on the right hand side, and we take that rib, and it's crazy, but we then chop it up. So I take that rib, and I cut it into thousands of little tiny pieces. And you can think of it like particle board. If you've ever done any construction, we see a piece of wood that's made of tiny little pieces that are all glued together. We do the same with the rib. And the reason we do that is if you just take a big piece of rib, and you carve it, and you stick it up in the nose, with time it will warp. It will have its own sort of memory, its own elastin within the cartilage that will make it twist and then you won't have a reliable shape of the nose. It can also create really harsh contours as the swelling goes down and look like somebody stuck something up under your skin. When we chop it all up, we call that a diced cartilage graft. We put it in a little mold and then add something called fibrin glue. Fibrin is what helps your body make a scab. So if you cut yourself and you put pressure on it and it stops bleeding, it's because the fibrin has come together with the other cells, the platelets and the other cells in your body and made a plug and it stopped the bleeding. But you can isolate that fibrin and there's companies that make it and you can use it as a glue to glue the cartilage together and once you glue it together you can shape it and then you can put that on top of the bridge right here and create a bigger nose and so that's how we create more structure that's made of the person's own body so that it won't be rejected in order to reshape and augment the nose because it involves fibrin and involves rib graft and involves actually quite a lot of time to dice up that cartilage. It is more complex and that's why I put it on the list of complex rhinoplasty but it's something that we do pretty often here. I also use it sometimes when people have a saddle nose deformity and we need to build up the bridge. We can take a rib and we can do it for that purpose as well. So next week we'll talk about the last category of complex rhinoplasty in my practice which is really big noses that want to be small. Everybody have a great weekend.